Hey guys, this is Melody, and today I'm doing a fan art piece, which is not something I normally do at all. Also, just a heads up, you're probably going to see the top of my head a bit on this one. Uh, I tend to really lean over and lean in when I'm doing details on pieces, or drawing or coloring something small, so it just happens. Uh, maybe one day I will figure out how to keep it from happening, but obviously yesterday, the day that I drew this, was not the day. So as you see on my phone, I was looking at reference photos. So the one that's on my phone at this moment was one that I was kind of referencing for the poses. Not quite, but it's a similar kind of thing. He's holding her, whatever. I did look at a few other ones. Like they were actually dolls holding each other. So it's kind of a combination of those things. But in this piece, I really wanted them to be looking at one another. And guys, let me just tell you, this was not the easiest piece in the world to draw. I'm not used to, one, drawing men, so obviously I had to look at reference photos. Um, like, you'll notice in my videos, maybe, or if you watch sketchbook tours and stuff, there's a lot of sketches of women, not so many of men. So drawing tuxedo mask was not the easiest thing in the world, but honestly, I, I think it turned out okay. Um, also I don't normally do full body <laughs> drawings. A lot of times I do like a portrait. So like shoulders up or you know, just like I try to avoid drawing hands. I try to <laughs> avoid drawing feet. I actually kind of enjoy drawing feet um, like the ones on Sailor Moon where it's just kind of like that profile and you get those nice like curves on them but drawing the feet of someone who's standing like tuxedo masks you can't really see them right now but you will later hopefully if i uh okay my hand's covering it but you know what i mean people that are standing like that i've always just found it so awkward to draw their feet so of course i looked at reference photos and i think it turned out okay i think i'm happy with the way it turned out in the end, especially considering that this is not something I normally draw. It's not my typical subject matter, um, but it is something I want to practice because if I do want to do a webcomic or something at some point, I need to be able to draw people. I need to be able to draw them together and interacting and I need to add like motion and stuff. So hopefully you'll see more stuff like this in the future. I did have a lot of fun with it. But I do always feel conflicted drawing fan art. So the thing with fan art, as much as a lot of artists draw it, is one, you can't sell it. Or at least you shouldn't. I don't know. It's a whole debate. The thing is, these characters are copyrighted, right? And while a lot of people will make um, drawings of them and stuff and they'll sell them on Redbubble or Etsy or anything like that, you're technically violating that copyright, I think. I've looked into a little bit, but not too much. I looked into it to the point that I just like don't want to sell fan art ever, unless I get to the point that I have a booth at a convention or something, because that's a little bit different. But I just feel weird selling art based on someone else's characters. These were someone else's designs, their ideas. So I don't think it's something that I would ever do except maybe like a commission for a friend or like as a gift. And so this will not have prints made of it. The original won't be sold. It was actually for some friends. Uh, it, it is one of a kind piece. And so I don't draw a lot of fan art because I can't post it on Etsy or anything like that. And it's not that I feel like all the art that I make needs to make me money because most of it isn't going to. Most of it I don't post on Etsy, but I think for me, I like to focus on my own ideas, trying to be original, because for such a long time I only drew fan art, and then I felt like I got into a rut where I wasn't creating any of my own ideas. But I think it is a lot of fun to go back and do some fan art, especially for things like Sailor Moon, because it's just so nostalgic. It was one of my favorite shows, like, of all time when I was a kid. I used to always pretend to be Sailor Moon or something. It was, I think, that and Pokemon were probably two of the most watched shows when I was a kid. Um, yeah, anyway, about this piece. So, the Copics usually don't smear. However, with Tuxedo Mask, I had to use a lot of black. 
And when I was doing the background, I did notice that sometimes it, the black would smear. So I kind of outlined the black areas with the marker and then tried to color it in to try to avoid the smearing. And like I said, this piece was for some friends. They had a housewarming party actually the day I drew this. I got the idea for this that day and I was like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try to finish this. Fortunately, I did finish it in time and I made some like soft pretzels and took it over. It was, it was good, but I was um, concerned I was not going to finish this in time just because it's not something I typically do. And there's my head again. Okay. Anyway, it was for their housewarming. So I had this idea that I would have them in front of this door as if like they had just moved into this house. And I think the idea turned out pretty well. If you're wondering, I did use Copic markers for this piece. Oh, my head. Sorry, it's distracting. Um, I did use Copic markers and I used Copic multi-liners as well as the Sakura, Sakura, I don't know, uh, brush marker. And the only problem with that was I hadn't used it on Bristol board before, which is the type of paper that I was using and it smeared really bad. So I was using, at first, the piece of paper that I was testing the markers on to get kind of a straight line with the brush marker, but then I pulled it away and noticed that a little bit of it smeared. It's not too obvious, but obviously it's not ideal. It's just that it doesn't sink into the paper. Like, it kind of stays wet on top of it for a little while. Um, while my head's in frame, don't you like my French braid? Yes, I used to do my hair like that all the time, but it's been a while. Anyway, I went through and lined them after I did the markers. The reason for this is that I've noticed even though the markers aren't supposed to smear once you use the, I don't know what I was just saying, the, the pens are not supposed to smear once you do the markers, but I have noticed that it definitely happens, especially with the lighter colors. And I have ruined a few pieces, maybe not completely ruined, but I don't like the look of the smearing on faces and stuff. It just, it really bothers me. So I started coloring before doing the line work. So I think first I went through with a 0.05 Copic liner because it's really, really thin and I wanted to get those details in there. I don't know why, but my hand was kind of shaky this day. So I was trying to do the lines quickly so that they'd be smooth. Um, that was me just trying to dab out some of the pink. There was still a lot of pink on her face and around her eyes and stuff, which, is, I mean, it's a style and sometimes I do that on purpose, but it was a little bit much, so I was trying to get some of it off. But yeah, I just kept on going with this liner. And then later I went over with a point one liner, just kind of around the hair and around the main parts of the body, not the small details, to kind of make them pop out from the background a little bit more. And here I used a red pencil to kind of just add a little bit of blush and just, you know, make them look like they're happy and they're blushing and they're in love and make it look like skin, I guess. Um, although I know a lot of artists use the Prisma color, uh, colorers, I think is what it's called. I don't think I've ever used those because I can't find them in the store or at least a few times that I've looked for them, I couldn't find them. However, one time I was at Staples and they were selling the Ticonderoga red erasable colored pencils. I don't know if it's really a colored pencil, I mean, I guess, but it's Ticonderoga. And I bought that and that's what I've been using ever since because quite frankly, I think it's basically the same thing. Maybe the quality of the pencil is a little bit different, but because it's just a sketch, I don't know that it matters that much. It's what's worked for me and they're really cheap, so it's been fine. After that, I just went in with a white gel pen to give a little bit of highlights here and there, and that basically finished up the piece. I guess I didn't say when I was doing the coloring with the markers, I did use a very, very light blue marker to kind of give some of the shadows on the white parts especially, but also on the faces and stuff, because it's subtle enough that you can see that it's there, but not so obnoxious that it's like super dark. So anyway, that concludes this piece. If you would like to see more fan art in the future, let me know in the comments and let me know what you would like me to do. I like My Hero Academia and 
you know, other animes, Pokemon, etc. So if there's something you'd like to see, just let me know. And if it's something that I'm at least somewhat knowledgeable about, maybe I'll make a video off of it. Anyways, if you have not yet, subscribe and give me a big thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next one.